Basically, we've discussed um, the normal distribution within the chapter discussing the analysis of one categorical variable. Today, we're going to learn some rules about that normal distribution. So this is the look of the normal distribution. The normal distribution just means that if you were to graph all of the values represented in a data set, it would have this particular shape to it. So we call that the normal distribution. Now, this curve, um, the area underneath it, represents a probability. So when you are looking at the normal distribution, the physical space represented underneath the curve and above the x-axis represents an actual probability. So like probabilities max out at 100%, this total area will max out or be equal to 1. So the area underneath the curve and above the x-axis is representing probability and the total area is equal to 1. Now, because probabilities uh, of the way that they are calculated or the rules connected to them, remember that they can never be negative. So probabilities can never be negative. And based on the way areas are actually found under this curve or in the normal distribution, you can never actually reach a point. And so because of that, when you say the probability of less than or the probability of less than or equal to, that actually would represent the same thing. Now, the fourth point refers to the shape of the normal distribution. So they call it unimodal because it only has one peak. So it's going up one time and falling once, meaning it has a unimodal shape. It's symmetric. So we know things are symmetric if they're equal on the right and left hand side. So these two are equal and therefore it's a symmetric curve. And they also describe this distribution as being bell shaped. So a bell-shaped distribution is described as such because when you look at it, the curve itself ends up looking like a bell. Now technically, this curve is not drawn as well as it could be, so I would draw it and have lines extending out indicating that there's no stopping point or that it's continuing on and on, meaning that the lower bound is technically negative infinity because there's no end to the curve, and technically, the upper bound would be positive infinity, again, because there's no end to the curve. Now, these curves are said to be symmetric about the mean. And if you remember from our discussion in the last lecture video, the mean of the sampling distribution is P. So that means the center of this distribution will be P. And then when you measure the spread, it's going to be measured using uh, standard deviation. Now, the last thing is a reminder, how do we get to that normal curve or the normal distribution? Remember, two things have to be true. You have to have both n times p, where n is the sample size, and p is the population proportion. And remember, because that's a value Referring to the population, it's also described as a parameter. And n times 1 minus p, both of those products have to be greater than or equal to 10. If this is true, then it will be the normal distribution.